thought for the day, brothers and sisters, today is reading in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 5, where Solomon gives a warning to his son about sexual sins, about sexual immorality, about adultery, staying away from a seductress woman. I think this also applies for women to stay away from men who are very seductive. My brothers and sisters, there is a big penalty, high consequences for sexual sins. Solomon, who wrote this uh, book of Proverbs here in this, ch this chapter in Proverbs, could have learned, from, I'm sure he learned from his lessons in life in 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 1 to 6, where we are told that Solomon had 1,000 women, 700 wives, 300 concubines, many of them from foreign nations, and we're told in the Bible that they led him away from his God. Let me first get this out, that this doesn't speak about you know, when it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 to 18, about not being unequally yoked, about not being equally unequally yoked with unbelievers, that doesn't mean that people of different races and cultures cannot get married. A lot of Christian churches in times past believed in keeping races apart from each other because of these verses. I am married to a Hispanic woman. Next week, we'll be married 27 years. She's from the Dominican Republic. I am an American white man. What keeps you together is your bond in Christ. Being unequally yoked is about being unequally yoked, not physically or culturally, but spiritually. This is what led Solomon away from the Lord, getting involved with foreign women, and not because of different cultures, but because he violated God's word. Like father, like son. Solomon's dad, King David, in 2 Samuel chapter 11, we are told that when he should have been at war with his soldiers, he was lackadaisical, lazy, hanging around on the roof of his uh, temple, saw a pretty woman by the name of Bathsheba taking a bath in her birthday suit, so to speak. And what happened after that? He had this rendezvous, this little escapade with this woman had her husband Uriah killed. And if you read the life of David after this, you see the devastating consequences in his life with his family. I had a friend of mine I used to work out with. His name was Charlie. Uh, we were about the same age. Years ago, we were lifting weights together. And I'll never forget what he told me. He said, Richie, never cheat on your wife. He told me this because he did cheat on his wife. Um, and after he cheated on his wife, he developed stomach cancer his children disowned him. His wife left him. He lost his home. He lost his uh, business. And just a few years ago, he recently passed away from this from this uh, cancer that he had. And I took that to heart. By the grace of God, for 27 years, I've stayed loyal to my wife um, in a physical sense. Jesus Christ told us in Matthew chapter 5, verse 28, not even to look at a woman lustfully. And there are times when I've been guilty of that. But in my life before I met my wife, when I was 21 years old, 1987, uh, after my friend who brought me to the Lord died of AIDS, the AIDS virus, um, I was devastated. My mother and father were going through a divorce. I was working in a medical center and there was a lady there twice my age. She was 42. Uh, she was an administrator in a medical center. Very attractive woman, beautiful lady, um, very petite, kept herself in great shape. However, um, she was going through things in her life. We met, emotional affair, uh, often affairs start with an emotional affair, talking, uh, filling gaps in each other's life. That is why we are told in James chapter 1, verses 13 to 16, that when we are tempted to sin, we are not to blame God. It starts with desires in our hearts. And it full blown can lead to death. Um, I got involved with this woman for about a year after it broke up. I remember vividly going to a local beach in my neighborhood where I lived, crying out to God to forgive me. I didn't blame God. I didn't say, God, why did you take my friend? Why did you allow this woman to come in my life? I blame you. Um, that's often the case, Adam and Eve, when they sinned in the Garden of Eden, they've started to blame the devil, God each other. Uh, in, in Genesis chapter 3, you could read that, in, especially in verses 12 to 13, 11 to 13. Um, you take personal responsibility. That's what I did. And that's what we all should do. Um, there's nobody without sin. Uh, sexual sins are very, very devastating. 
Um, this sexual sin that I committed with this lady almost 33 years ago, um, I still remember. I don't condemn myself, but you see, when you sin sexually, you become one with that person. We are told that in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 18, especially verses 18 to 20, where when you sin sexually, you sin against your own body, your own conscience. And that is why we are told so often in the Bible, in Proverbs chapter 5, where Solomon told his son to stay away from sexual immorality. Solomon had to learn this, as I said, in 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 1 to 6, the devastating effects of getting involved with women he shouldn't have been involved with. His own father, as we learned with David, with Bathsheba, 2 Samuel chapter 11. As I shared with a close friend of mine, what went through his life, what went on in his life after he cheated on his wife. And I like to be I like to be authentic. I like to be real. I'm very, people say I carry my heart on a sleeve. And I shared what I went through, not to speak about glorifying sin, but to speak about the devastating consequences that sexual sins have on a person's life. Today in America, when I was a young boy growing up in the 70s and the early 80s as a young man, there was, I think, seven or eight sexually transmit transmitted diseases in our country. Now I hear there's over 40. Um, there is just so much scientific proof of what sexual sins do to a person. Pornography, um, sexual morality with pornography, especially on the Internet, is a big, big thing right now. It even affects people in church. has tremendous psychological effects. It's been proven this. This is why God tells us to keep ourselves pure. Let us be like Job, who said in Job chapter 31, verse 1, that he made a covenant with his eyes not to look at a woman lustfully. Even Joseph, and you can read the story of Joseph in Genesis chapter 37 to chapter 50. Um, when he was tempted by Potiphar's wife, he fled from her in Genesis chapter 39, verse 9. He said, I cannot sin against my God. He got out of there. That's why we are told to flee sexual immorality. Don't even fight this. Flee and run to Jesus Christ. As we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5, our warfare and our battle armor is not carnal, it's spiritual. When we take all things in subjection to Christ, only through him can we win this battle. I hope today's devotional video will encourage us all to stay pure in the sight of the Lord. For those who are married, remember Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Keep the marriage bed undefiled, because God will judge. Take care. God bless you.